Welcome, welcome, everybody. Welcome again to another episode of the Hometown Hawks Podcast. I'm your host, Henry Vasquez, as always, joined by Mr. Wright, aka, aka Blinks, aka what else? What all do you call yourself this season? Cause season's over. Our Hawks, uh, Hawks are now ten and three with the uh, disappointing loss, uh, Big Ten championship game. But uh, you know, before we get into all of that, you know, I want to uh, just, I guess, congratulate the boys for making the championship game. It's Absolutely. been a good season, ups and downs, lots of downs, more downs than ups. But uh, uh, you know, we're gonna kick it off here with just uh, explaining how our weekend went here. How, how was your weekend, Mister Wright? Uh, you know, it was good. Yeah, me and my wife actually went and kind of finished up uh, Christmas shopping. Um, had you know, we had to have a big push in regards to that. Uh, would have loved what the game, but at the end of the day, you know, got to make sure the kids are squared away uh, and everybody else. But in all reality, it's not even about me. You, sir, you actually have the ability to attend the game. You drove from Iowa all the way down to freaking Indy and Lucas Oil Stadium. How was your weekend? <laughs> so this was kind of a last minute thing. You know, I, I had said that all along I was going to go. Um, circumstances came up that I could get to go. I wasn't going to just because, you know. You know the big hype around us. We weren't supposed to be there. But, uh, you know, I've been to the last two. I went to this this one here. I wasn't going to miss it, I guess. Um, uh, great experience. You know, uh, as always, um, uh, took my in-laws with us, and uh, we actually met up with our, our buddy from Indiana, Mark and Stacy Lewis. Um, you know, we stayed at their house, as always. Um, they live like a half hour from Indy. Here we are here enjoying the right outside of Lucas Oil Stadium on That's the awesome. north side. Yeah, we just kind of flip through these pictures here. Well, good time, good time. Um, we didn't make it down there till later. You know, he he uh, the man uh, when we got there, he actually. Cooked us a big lunch, had some steaks for lunch. We were bellies were full. Nice trip to, you know, into Indy. We went to a bar, the Slippery Noodle, I believe it was called. But it was a. Uh, I can tell you right now, there wasn't hardly any Hawkeye fans in that bar. It was a, uh, we were just confined to a little corner. A um, lot, a lot of Michigan. Michigan shows up. Um, I guess they have something to, uh, I guess they're pretty proud of their team and they should be. Um, yeah, but I have, you know, mixed emotions about that. You know, um, we'll see We'll we'll explain. I'll explain what's going on here. What, why I, I wasn't too impressed. So what, what were your initial thoughts on the game there, Mr. Wright? Let's, uh, so thoughts, without going into much detail, you know, just cause we'll, we'll yeah. explain through it. We'll go through. Oh, absolutely. Uh, initial thoughts. Um, you know, I had the hype. Um, I just had this feeling, you know, uh, we, we, we played this team uh, years ago when they were ranked, you know, they were ranked, what, three, four. Um, we weren't really nothing. We had a bunch of losses, and, and we beat them. Um, I, just, I just had a, this crazy feeling that at some point our offense would actually have the ability to click. Um, we just didn't get there, and um, whatever restaurant actually, it's X Golf, I believe that's in like Cedar Rapids, uh, stated that um, they're going to provide free beer until somebody scores. <laughs> Iowa, well, Iowa scores. Yeah, until Iowa scores. Uh, I would love I to those... see. Yeah, I, I would love to see uh, how many beers were distributed throughout that location uh, during the time of that. Because we didn't score, so so they came out and they said they only served 120 beers. Oh, that's not bad. That's not, no, too bad. That's not bad at all. And all in all, you know, I probably, I probably would have just slept there. I'm like, yeah, my next beer, you haven't scored yet. Exactly. But I'm uh, like, hey, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> why not? You know, yeah. Um, you know, we uh, our section where I was sitting, 
uh, we were surrounded, you know, I guess uh, we were surrounded by Michigan fans. Like I said, we were outnumbered, no doubt about it. Um, they showed up to root their team on. Um, but super nice guys right in front of us, you know, right in front of us, the dude in front of me, we hit it off, talked football. Uh, he was uh, uh, just very, you know, Humble. he – just the, yeah, very, yeah, very humble. Just the way that he, uh, you know, we talk football. We talk football, guy to guy, you know. And he was very, you know, just impressive. That's the best defense they probably played. You know, Iowa, Iowa showed up to play. The defense did. Yep. You know, I, and, and to be honest, if it weren't for two big plays that they capitalized on, I think we would have been right in that game. You know, but absolutely. Again, when only two thirds of your team shows up to do their job. Makes it very tough. Okay. So let's just kick it off with the first quarter here, you know. So let's do it. Um, yeah. So Michigan uh, won the coin toss and they deferred to the second half, giving us the ball to start the, you know, to start the, uh, the game. Um, and of course, uh, as always, uh, what did we go? Three and out? Yes. Uh, well, you know, I was actually kind of surprised because, you know, we went kind of beginning with more of a, a pass uh, method. Um, and I don't even think it was until our second possession that uh, LaShawn or even K2 uh, actually really touched the ball. So that kind of caught me off guard. I was like, okay, you know, hey, we have something going on here. Uh, but, you know, when he dropped back and comes out, he's, he's just he's just very slow. Um, the, the ability for that ball to come out, um, it's just degraded to the point that by the time that he even attempts to try to make that throw, especially on that first drive um, or but even within the game, um, you know, those D backs, you know, the defense is on, on top of us trying to, you know, trying to, uh, you know, jar the ball out. So it's just, it was just slow. That makes sense. Yeah. Right. Yep. So, yeah. So we, uh, Come out, let's look kind of flat, but you know, then we kick, we punt it, and then uh, we hold Michigan to a 14 play drive where they, you know, they, they kick the field goal. So making it three, three nothing game. Mm -hmm. uh, we get the ball, we actually capital, you know, we do get a first down, we end up punting again. And on this punt, okay, this is the punt where uh, our special teams kind of, you know, the not characteristic to them of them to do something like this. They nice deep punt. Um, what's it? Ooh, how, let me see here. It was, it was uh, like, a, it was like an 87 yard return. Yeah. It, yeah. 87 yard return mm -hmm. to the, I to our five. Okay. So big kudos to kudos, not kudos. I guess, uh, Cohen and trigger, uh, uh, that kid, Busted ass down there. He did. I don't know what happened there that he lost his footing, slipped right by the dude, and you know they're they're he runs it back down to the five, but who? Lo and behold, the guy that slipped, yeah, knocked him out of bounds. Yeah, the guy that slipped clear down there. He's the one that caught back up to him. You know, so the kid's young. Yeah. We, that freshman. That he's a, shows he's a, a freshman. Lot of, yeah, you know, he's a fresh. Yeah, he's. He's gonna be a baller, man. I, you know, we're we have opened the transfer portal. You know, there's a few guys that have jumped in, but we'll get into that in a little bit. But uh, you know, we got to keep these young guys in. We got to keep them here. But uh, yeah, what, what crazy Absolutely. play? So in all reality, you know, freaking when he slipped, and then and then that secondary individual slipped as well. Um, he could have said, "Screw it, I'm I'm just gonna just." Let the guy run, but he did. You know, uh, he had enough heart and uh, and dedication and, and love for this program to say, you know what, I screwed up. I should have got him. Well, you know what? Now I'm now I'm going to do it. I'm going to catch him down uh, and stop. I'm not going to give this guy a touchdown. No, and uh, that's what he did. And that, you know, his his ability to do that to me just shows a, a immense right. heart, as you stated. Um, and you know, no quit that no quit mentality that the Hawkeyes, you know, produce. So that was absolutely phenomenal. 
yeah. So like I said, un, 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 uncharacteristic uh, of, of uh, our special teams, right? So that yeah. that sets up a short yardage for uh, Michigan for Blake Corum to, you know, get in there for another touchdown. You know, simple. They, they just had to gain five yards on two plays. They they got the touchdown. So uh, yeah. And then you know we can probably you know we skip through a bunch of the rest of the way here. You know, and we did have a fumble in the rest of the way, but we got to, we get to the half. This is a ten nothing game, okay? That that run doesn't happen. The way our defense was playing at half, it was going to be a three nothing game. It should have been absolutely. Yeah. Yep, three nothing game, okay? That's you know we're holding holding this power offense. That's you know they're not. And like I said earlier, you know when I beg to differ, I don't think they're. Their offense is not that good against a good yeah. defense. You know, nope. great defense. You know, Iowa has a, you know, what are we, four and fourth in the country? Yes, we are. Yeah. The, you top know, top five. five that, that, that put, top five puts you in an elite defense, if you ask me. You know, the defense wins games. You know, but like I said, two-thirds of, you know, when two-thirds of the team shows up, not the rest, you know, it's just kind of sucks. Sucks big time. So, okay, so we get to halftime. Um, so the Michigan gets the ball and again, um, you know, Michigan, we hold Michigan to, uh, they, they get a first down they do. And then, you know, they punt on fourth punt. down and then, uh, this is when we, yes, this is the play where that went, when we, when we, uh, got that, they had a shitty punt and it didn't go too far. Right. Yep. And then we were short few. Okay, so then uh, I'm pretty sure this was it. But either way. We had, we had great field pos- that we like position. Yeah, like the, the field position that we had, like we. We like, we, we, we were going to be, yeah. We could have got like, three, right? We were going to be, if we went away in three and out, field goal yeah. range. Um, I'm pretty sure that's when they. So we had three fumbles, right, total? I can't remember if that was yeah. the play or not, but. Either way, um, they scored a touchdown. I think I might have jumped the gun there, but either way, you know, with um, that play uh, where I got you know, the one I'm play- talking about, where Jazz got that short pass mm-hmm. from, uh, you know, I think it was just a, the the dump off pass, but he, yep. Jazz Patterson got you know smoked there where he uh, lost the ball and then they fumbled and they got the ball, you know, the plays like that just make a huge game changer, you know. For for the opposing team, you know, we we're it just kind of brings that, you know, we're already struggling, and then just brings it down even more. It just sucks. Absolutely, and you know, when I sit there and kind of look at it, and or just the offense in general, you know, going from the first quarter, uh, transitioning to the second quarter, uh, in my mind, I thought that you know we would have some kind of scheme um, that would have the ability to, um, you know. Kind of assist, kind of figure out how you know the defense was rolling, um, but I'm gonna be honest. You know, my son, who's 11 years old, uh, just in the third quarter alone, he literally guessed like four or five of the plays that were gonna occur. And if an 11 year old child can guess what the plays are going to be, individuals who are defensive coordinators or even, you know, the college author who can see the play already understand uh, what, what play is coming. Um, so the advantage and the disadvantage, you know, the, the advantage of the defense was they were there because they knew it was going to happen. But the, you know, disadvantage of, of what our offense, you know, ability can do. And again, I'm, I'm going to my 11 year old son who sat there and called our offensive plays. Um, it was just, it wasn't going to happen. Um, and that's yeah. the downfall of, of what we've seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I know we'll get in the fourth quarter and then we'll have some stats on that. Yeah. But it's just, so, yeah, so, yeah. So anyways, I jumped the gun there. So that, that play that I was talking about here where they scored, the, no, and it was another short yard is how they scored the touchdown. Um, that bullshit call where I guess no, your hand is no longer attached to your arm going forward. Yep. Um, that was kind of a bullshit call. It should have been just a dead ball um, where they blow the whistle and then you can still pick up the ball and hand it to the ref. Um, 
and then where they gave the, the ball to Michigan. Yeah. yeah, short yardage, of course, you know. With the penalty, because Brian Ferns got a penalty on the right. call. And he had every right to go ape shit on the refs, you yeah. know. Oh, absolutely. You tell me how you're not, you know, it was a bullshit call. You know, they don't. Um, and, and even the fans around me was like, dude, that guy was, that was not a fumble. Like the Michigan fans were even agreeing with me. You know, again, that short yardage is going to kill us. You know, because that's that's where our defense just like thrives. To, you know, we pin them deep, and we're eventually going to get the three. You know, yep. get the stop, and they're going to punt the ball back to us. But that was just a, a shitty, shitty call on the, on the rush. You know, and, and I'm not blaming the game on the rush there. Okay, and that's um just my just couldn't. Yeah. Go ahead. My other thing is, you know, you you have. You know, this instant replay for a reason. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and, and I know Kirk said what he had to say about instant replay. And, and you know what? I don't disagree with him for the fact that, you know, look at the play in general. But it seems like instant replay is now turning into something that's just, well, hey, what about this, 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 this? this? Like, look at the play. Mm-hmm. You know, if, if you want to look back at freaking the Cooper DeGene, him – Saying, "Hey, watch out for the ball! Watch out for the ball!" And, well, right. no, no, no. You know, no. That that was a, a voided, freaking fair catch call. Yada yada. It, it just garbage. Um, but I have not seen when it comes to instant replay from the referees and or the zebras, if you want to call them. Mm-hmm. Um, not just for the Hawkeyes, but just in general. Uh, so many just bad calls. And there's, you know, in the individuals who are up there are supposed to be the subject matter experts of having the ability to to say, hey, this is where we're at. This is what we think. It's just it's it's wild to me. Right. You know, and I was just going in there with hopes to have a good game, you know, and to be honest, you take away those two fuck ups that we had that, you know, yep. set them up for short yardage. This at the end of the game, you know, all they did was field goal. So that, this would have been a 12 nothing game. Total defensive, uh, uh, you know, showing for Iowa. Yeah. Um, you know, and like I said, Iowa's only, like I showed here, he's only scored two touchdowns in the three championship games that we've been to Indy, you know. That's and since 15. 15. <laughs> yeah. 21. 23. Two touchdowns. Are you shitting me? I'm total embarrassing. You know, embarrassment, you know. Yeah. Um. You know, it's just a huge decline of our. And then, I'm not gonna. You know, I'm not gonna say that Michigan State game that that was a shootout. Okay, that was a defensive shootout both ways. That was a game. That was a great game. Hell yeah. You know, you know, but the, you know, the last two showings that we've had there. Um, just like I said, just a total ass kicking and let down. But it, I mean, that's like I, I'm not gonna say that this was a complete ass kicking, but. We beat our own ass. It's what, it's what you know. Our game plan did not. We did what we weren't supposed to do. You know, they knew the game plan. Yeah. Don't fucking turn it over. Don't do stupid shit. Do your job. That that, that killed us. You know. It, I don't yeah, agree with you. Me. No, I, I don't agree with you. But you know, when you look at it, um, the offensive productivity that we've had at all has been minute. Um, so coming in this, going through the season, and, and you know, uh, when, when you know when we had Kate somewhat healthy, and you know, I still remember like the first game when he threw that bomb, and it, it, it was just perfect. I was like, oh man, I haven't seen this since freaking Bethard, or you know, and then now when you look at it, it's there's just no offensive productivity. Um, the plays are just the same. Plain Jane, Pee Wee football, JV football, uh, from Highland High School, whatever, whatever you want to call it, or you know, it's it's just not fair. Um, and going into this game, I I thought that you know maybe we would try to do something different, try to you know do some outside the box items, but in all reality, um, I didn't see any of that. And whatever. at the end, at the end of the day. This is why Brian Ferentz is going to go the way that he does. And I just pray that the offense, you know, the offensive struggles we have, you know, have ability to 
get, you know, get closed and, and then we get somebody who can come in. But at the end of the day, you know, Kirk Ferentz still runs offense, defense, and, and the entirety of, of what we do. So if there's no change at the head of the snake, then we won't have any change at all. You're exactly right. You know, he's, you know, and, and the whole thing is, if he's not going to, if, if he didn't let go, you know, of the reins while his son was there, you know, Brian bleeds black and gold, you know, he's been through the program, you know, yeah. if he's not going to do it for his own son to save his job, why the fuck would he do it with anybody else? You know, that's the dilemma we have now. You know, he's been here, yes, 25 years, but you know what? Shit's got to change. <laughs> yeah. It's, just, it's like know, this, yeah. Is the worst, this is the worst offense since, what, his first year, right? 2020 or 20, uh, 98. Yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah. So, and, he's and, still, I'm sorry, he, he's still and, trying to, get, he's still trying to, yeah. yeah. He's, He's still trying to play the same offense that he thinks is going to work, but everything has just evolved. Everything's evolved so much. Um, if, if you look at it, right, freaking uh, Brad Banks is probably one of the best quarterbacks I ever see in, in my time as a Hawkeye fan to ever play, who was a Heisman runner-up. Um, after that, you look at Drew Tate, who had ability to run, who had ability to move around, and, and he used his feet. After that, you know, Ricky Stanzi, Ricky Stanzi did what he could. And then after that, Stanzi, I'm going to Michigan. We were at Betherton. And then after that, not Stanzi. Oh, it's Rudock. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. Jake, yeah, Jake Rudock. I apologize. But then after that, now you put in a guy who's 260 pounds and he struggles to even get the ball out within three to five seconds. This guy needs seven to eight seconds just to move his goddamn ass out of the out of the damn pocket okay. to do anything. <laughs> All right. So, you know. Another devastating loss for the Hawks, you know, uh, 26 to nothing against Michigan. Game's over. Team's 10 and 3 now. So, uh, um, bowl games, bowl game bids came out now. So, the, the designation for their bowl game now. So, Iowa for their infamous uh, 2004, what used to be the Capital One Bowl, now the Citrus Bowl. Iowa heads back there to face Tennessee. I don't know shit about Tennessee. You? <laughs> yeah, uh, Tennessee's actually played, been playing really great football all freaking season, um, and and that's what's scary. And you made a comment earlier in regards to you know uh, you believe that you would see more Hawkeye uh, faithful and hopeful uh, just in Indy. I think that you're probably that we're probably going to get about as much and or less uh, participation to go to Florida to watch Tennessee play Iowa because it's going to be the same thing that occurs. Right. Tennis um, it's just an extra game, so I don't know how much uh, – I know a lot of these guys have uh, – I, they, I think some of the guys said that a lot of them want to play one, one last time together before they say – a lot of this transport portal crap, you know. We we already have one uh, one guy leaving. Uh, Diaz, uh, uh, Brendan Diaz Fernandez. Um, he was, you know, he got he kind of got buried in the depth chart there behind. Uh, I know he was up and coming, but he, I mean, he, he got passed up by like T.J. Hall. Mm. Um, you know, when Jamari Harris leaves, he's going to be the ne you know one of the next guys in. But again, just getting passed up by like some of these new guys that are be. Um, they have a lot of uh, uh, hype about, you know, some of these freshmen that are actually playing a little better mm -hmm. at practice and whatnot. So, I mean, I, you know, so wish the, kid all the, wish the kid all the best, you know, you know, you don't, once a Hawk, always a Hawk, you don't put the boys down. Yeah. You know, he's got to do what's best for, you know, best for him, whatever he thinks is best for him. Oh, absolutely. For, for his career, uh, mm -hmm. you know, his ability to go to the next level. Uh, Spencer Peters just came out saying that he's going to go to Utah State now. Uh, you know, Spence, we appreciate you on the sideline calling plays and, and doing everything you possibly can to help the team. Um, you know, I, I, I was, I'll be honest with you, you know, I was kind of aggravated with, with your ability to, 
to perform many, many times, but hopefully at Utah State, you, you kind of fit in and, and actually have a, a coordinator or an offense that actually makes sense to you and, you know, actually utilizes your abilities that they possibly could. So good luck to you. Um, but yep. I, you know, and, and to start it out there, you know, especially with Joey Lavas, I thought for sure that when you're down 20, 27 0, we went about Joey and Jessica, you know, he won us a doggone bowl game, right? We went to the freaking bowl game last year versus Kentucky in Nashville, but we we stayed with freaking Cannon Nuts. And I just don't understand the the mentality of it for the fact that that doesn't show, you know, progression. That just shows, well, hey, this is what we're going to do. It is what it is. And yeah. that's why I feel that this bowl game is not going to be uh, hyped up for individuals who spend thousands of dollars to go. Right. So um, me and Amy got to talk and we – we had a little wild hair in our ass that was like, hey, if it is in Florida, maybe we'll just take the kids down and make it a trip, family trip. Mm -hmm. Still on the fence about it, but we're just, uh, we, we're due for a trip, but we haven't, you know, I looked up tickets and whatnot, but uh, everything's just kind of, as soon as they came out, we we were on it right away. We could have bought, you know, got everything done, but we're just kind of. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we, we made the trip out here. Um, I, I, I just don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm on the fence about it. You know, we, we want to go to Florida and, you know, get oh, out yeah. of the cold weather and have, enjoy it, have the kids have fun, but we, uh, we'll figure it out. But, um, I guess we got a bowl game to talk about yet. So, um, yeah, we got wrestling, Iowa wrestling, uh, another nail biter. Jeez Louise. <laughs> I didn't watch it, but I, I kept, kind of kept up on it on my phone. Uh, I kind of forgot all about it to be honest. Um, versus Penn, another nail biter. Yeah, versus oh, Penn, which is an oh, Ivy League man. team. Very good wrestling, though. They got great wrestling. You know, I, I know we didn't bring the full the full squad, but we still uh, um, the guys got to still show up. And it looks like uh, our seventy four ponder or eighty four Brendan Swafford off the team now. I guess he another gambling deal, so he's he's gonna be done. Which is, you know, he was he was our eighty four, but which now, you know, that opens up the spot for, um, leaving it how it is now. We'll see how, we'll see how it goes. You know, Kennedy took a tough loss. Again, he, you could just tell he was gas, and you know some of the highlights I watched. But um, we'll see how it goes. Like I said, once once football season is over here, I'll get more into wrestling. I, um, we'll get it dialed in. A absolutely. Hey, you know, what I can tell you is uh, for the, the women's uh, basketball game uh, versus BG, uh, you know, they actually had we actually had some freaking uh, movie stars and, and popular individuals, um, you know, the Caitlin Clark effect. Yes. The, and that's what it was. And, and they were there uh, in effect just to watch her ability to uh, play basketball. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, if you look at it, she does she does it right. Um, mm -hmm. You know what? The cockiness, absolutely. That's going to be the biggest. That's part of that, that, that sports, right? Um, you have to have that edge and be like, "Hey, let's go get it." Um, but yeah. w women came out above as they usually do. Um, you know, I know the men are probably coming up soon. Um, and you know, once we start focusing our attention to that, you know, I'll definitely have more on that. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it was just the Big Ten championship in my mind. All the way through, praying, praying for a Hail Mary win, and uh, it's, it's not what we received. Yep. Well, yeah. Um, just a fun weekend, though, overall. I haven't seen my buddy in a while. Um, definitely uh, talked to him and whatnot. Just had a great time. And then, um, you know, we got home, and I kind of woke up. I'm like, oh, crap, the Eagles game's on with Jesse's uh, – Jess, Jesse's a uh, big uh, Eagles fan, so – uh, they played the Niners, and he, he was just talking, you know, he, he was just talking smack to them, so. Hey, Jess, so this song goes out to you, bro. Bang, bang, Niner gang. Bang, bang, Niner gang. <laughs> bang, bang, Niner gang. Bang, bang, Niner gang. Bang, bang, Niner gang. Bang, bang, Niner gang. He was freaking smack that out. Bang, bang, Niner gang. He 
just talking. I'm not a Niners fan, but uh, nope. No, he was talking smack how the Eagles are going to beat the my Cowboys next week. So I just got to give it back to him here. He's just talking. He's, talking. He's, he's just talking. Uh, but anyways, everybody, thanks for joining us again for another episode of the Hometown Hawk Podcast. I'm, again, I'm your host, Henry, Mr. Wright. Thanks for uh, listening, keeping up with us all season. Like I said, we, we will try to get a podcast out once a week. Um, this time At a minimum. You know, holidays. Yeah holidays and shit coming up yeah. it's gonna be uh whenever we can do it we'll get something out but uh fluid yeah. we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep up with this uh we'll keep up with this transfer portal stuff you know guys coming and going and we will uh um i'll stay on top of it you know i iowa football never stop never sleeps here so nope. um until then hey go hawks thanks for listening play my theme yeah, music baby <laughs> let's go Hawk, 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 hawk